So good afternoon, everyone. <coughs> uh, so my name is uh, Stéphane Drouin. I'm a professor of sociology at the University of Limoges. And I did um, a survey about some of the interfaces um, events. So I will present the main findings and the uh, hypothesis that we can make about this, uh, this survey. And uh, we're obviously uh, open to, to, dis to discussion in the following panel. So the title is uh, Researching the Frontiers of Contemporary Classical Music Audiences. And uh, this is, uh, in this survey, we, we research the morph morphological aspects of the contemporary classical concert audiences on a selection of an interfaces events, music events, because they are not always concerts in the classical meaning of the term. So the question would be uh, how age, class, gender, education, and musical expertise influence their cultural behavior, and how different kind of co musical events, including but not limited to concerts, quote unquote, can provide uh, different ways to attract new audiences. What are the main symbolic frontiers uh, that still prevent or limit the diversification of contemporary classical music concert audiences. This is obviously the main challenge and the great difficulty of uh, uh, we are facing with audience development. So the survey itself um, is, um, is it designed, uh, is based on a collection of questionnaires distributed between June 2017 and December 2019 in a large number of interface, uh, interfaces musical events in uh, seven countries. Um, thus, the, the design is based on the convenience for sampling, that is to say a non-random or non-probability sampling, which has some uh, advantages. It's uh, easier to implement than random sampling, obviously, which is costly and lengthy. And it's useful for pilot text testing, that is was our objective, and it's a cost-effective method as well. Its main disadvantage uh, is a selection bias of the most involved segments of the audience. That is to say, no, um, it's not uh, everybody that answers the questionnaires, but only the most invent, or, or at least it's the, the most common hypothesis that we have. So we have to, to make comparisons uh, in time when we can about uh, these contemporary classical music audiences. So this is to be compared with the results of existing research on uh, this, uh, this kind of audiences in concerts and flat festival. Here is a, a list of uh, well-known research in sociological literature about uh, contemporary classical music audiences between 1986 and, and today. So um, the, about this existing literature, uh, we have some uh, fair uh, amount of uh, the data about the sociodemographic profile of the audiences. In the later years, there has been a rapid aging of the classical music concert audiences, classical as a whole. Uh, the medium age uh, is about uh, 63 in France, meaning 50% of the audiences are older than 63. And uh, it's a main finding that, uh, which confirms already observed trends in Europe and, uh, and America. It affects as well concert venues as uh, festivals, and there has been an acceleration in the last decade, which is most debated uh, in, in, the, in the cultural sector and the, and the academic sector. There are similar findings, as I said, in American and European studies and the uh, survey in public participation in the arts in the US, or the Pratique Culturelle des Français, or the Eurobarometer, and some uh, national surveys that are available among different countries all over Europe. Regarding now contemporary classical music as a specific segment of uh, this uh, music offer, uh, the audiences are slightly younger, in fact. The medium age today is around 55 against 63, but still, the age aging over time is uh, also um, um, an aspect of this uh, phenomenon. We can uh, tell it from uh, the comparison of two uh, surveys. One I've been doing in the late 2000s about the uh, audiences of the Ensemble Intercontemporain uh, in France. 
and uh, it was the kind of repetition of the, uh, another study by uh, Pierre-Michel Menger, who is a professor of sociology at the Collège de France, and who, who did the same survey uh, 20, uh, 35 years ago now, and found a median age of 40, whereas I found a median age of 55, as you to say, some uh, aging, uh, even if it's uh, younger than uh, classical music audiences uh, um, uh, in, in France. And in regarding all the aspects of this socio-demographic profile, this, these audiences are highly educated. More than 15% all the PhD, which is quite rare even in the cultural audiences. And um, 75 over 75 all at least a, a, a BA, which is really, really a high uh, percentage. They also um, hold the musical expertise, that is to say high levels of music education and formal music education through conservatoires, for instance, and are also regular concert attendees of various genres of music, but especially in the hybrid uh, sector of music, you know, classical, jazz, and uh, opera, for instance. But still, in uh, these uh, venues and festivals, there are around 25 newcomers. It depends on, this, on the surveys, but one-fourth of the audiences are newcomers who come to contemporary classical music concerts or events because of the programs or the festival uh, they are um, um, accustomed to, and uh, they, they follow what the, pro, the, the cultural institutions propose, and then sometimes it's uh, contemporary classical music. So this is um, a figure to, to remember among the great number of figures that I, I will uh, uh, give you today. So now the findings of the uh, interfaces uh, survey. The main result is about age. The medium age I found is this 80, uh, 820 uh, questions collected and analyzed is 39 years old, which is uh, comparable, in fact, to rock audiences to be compared with, because rock audiences have also aged during the last decades. And uh, this is quite a renewal um, uh, age-wise. Age the mean age is 41, and 25% of the audiences have less than 28. And I should also add here that the questionnaires were implemented only where it, when it was possible and when it was only designed for children, for instance, or younger, the very young, the, the youngest audiences, the youngest segments of the audiences, the questionnaires was not uh, the appropriate method. So the results can be even better than this. So this is really something we can rely upon. Uh, regarding education, and this is really interesting because we have a younger audience, um, the PAGs are also in great numbers, come in great numbers, over 14%, and BA and beyond are still in over uh, the, over the uh, 75%, which means that the these audiences are younger, but still highly educated on the same uh, levels. Regarding gender, we have almost reached uh, gender equality, and even uh, uh, women are slightly, uh, out, slightly outnumbered men in this, uh, in this survey, which is uh, in line also with the results about the cultural audiences uh, uh, surveys we have in general in uh, every form of art. Is, uh, there has been a, a feminization of these audiences over the three or four last decades. And um, especially contemporary classical music in the 80s were probably uh, more um, um, oriented toward uh, a male audience or majority, majority of males in the, in the audience. Regarding music education, um, more than 50% have one, even a small one of some private lessons, and 25% of the formal education in classical music, which is a quite uh, a, a high number, a high proportion evidently, uh, which means we have also this musical capital, as I said earlier, in the sense of Bourdieu, which is a specific cultural capital. And it's not surprising here that, that uh, they are playing an instrument for more than 55% of uh, these uh, this, uh, um, samples, especially the piano, but it were, the result interesting here is other, the uh, uh, category there, which amounts to 
to the same uh, percentage as the piano, which means uh, they are maybe uh, using uh, electronic devices and, uh, and composition by, uh, by computer and, uh, and playing on, on, on a computer also. And another result which is uh, interesting is the, 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 the frequencies and the attendances. Uh, more than once in a month and more than once in a week account for the half of this survey. That is to say they are great concert, uh, consumers, if we, uh, if we say that in an, an economic way. And the following result is in line with the, the former, uh, since uh, we have only 8.8% .8 of newcomers, that is to say people who have never been to a new contemporary classical music concert before, which is less than in concerts and festival venues, and which uh, has to be taken into account, especially considering that there are younger audience. Younger audience, but more accustomed to uh, contemporary classical and or new music and new forms of music. And it's also to be found in the motivations to come to the event. The music come first, followed by the composers, the works, the orchestra of performers, and only after that, the location or free admission. Um, and regarding the sociability, which is a very important uh, aspect of the cultural uh, behavior, um, a lot of people are coming with a friend of a partner, more than 50% uh, 50, 50 of the audience, if, if you add the second and the third line, with a friend of with my partner, which is also in line with what we know about concert attendances. It's um, a partner or friend um, activity, but still, 30% come uh, on their own, meaning uh, people going along to a concert which is not uh, as frequent in the general population. And finally, regarding the cultural profile, that is to say the preferred uh, uh, genre, uh, genres of uh, music uh, in the audience, the results are also quite interesting because uh, jazz comes first with contemporary and new music distinguished arbitrarily from an aesthetic point of view between the, the Boulez tradition and the uh, Reich uh, tradition of, to, to say uh, to say it in a nutshell. And um, after that, it's classical music, but rapidly followed by electronic music, which is really the surprising um, result. Not so surprising when we speak about sound art, but still, this is really, really important and really far more than world music, uh, rap, hip hop, or even pop and, uh, and uh, different kinds of, um, of uh, rock music, and even more than, than, than opera. So this is the general morphological uh, aspect of uh, this population. Now, I'd like to speak of the main finding, in fact, of the result, the old role of age. Uh, that is to say, we can control the role of different variables and test them over the results through um, the examination of uh, significant correlations. And when I tried with education, which usually comes first as the main um, um, determinant of the cultural behaviors uh, or musical knowledge here or gender, in fact, here in this survey, they have less significant effects than age. So age has particular significant effects, and which rely on a p-value in statistical terms, which are really low, so this is really significant. The first one on sociability. The sociability is different um, according to the different segments of the audience by age. The younger segments tend to come with family, whereas middle age come with a partner or friend, and older ones come on, on their own. That is to say it's, that it has to be um, a kind of a life cycle of uh, the sociability to the concert or the uh, musical events um, uh, in, in, in the cultural behavior. Uh, regarding experience with new music, it's no surprise that the younger, the 28 uh, years old and less, are more than 22% who have never been before to a new music concert versus 6% of the 50 plus. This is not really a surprise, but it is also interesting. That is to say, we have to slightly moderate what I was saying on the global sample. And our younger audiences are not that accustomed to uh, new music than the general so, sample. And regarding musical capital, uh, it's the opposite. Younger audiences, segments, tend to have more often a formal classical music education. 
and in, in quite large uh, proportions, 33% versus 8%. And that's in line with what I found about the uh, ensemble intercontemporain audiences. That is to say, the uh, audiences for contemporary classical music, when they are younger, tend to be more educated into classical um, music. And it's uh, true also of this uh, pan-European uh, survey that we conduct. Regarding motivations, we have also um, interesting results showing that the younger audience segments come because of free admission or to accompany someone they know or from their, from their family, whereas the older ones come only for the music or the performance of or, or musicians. That is to say, there is also a life cycle here, hypothesis about the way uh, people are, are, are coming, or the reasons the people are coming to, uh, to the musical events. And regarding music preferences, this is also an interesting result because younger audience segments tend to be more open to electronic music, rock and pop, or even hip, hip hop music. This is in line with what we know about the general shift in cultural preferences. And uh, whereas the older ones uh, stick to classical music and opera, uh, even if they have not followed to the same levels the formal classical music education. So, so this is a hint that uh, can show us that there is a general, generational effect uh, on uh, music preferences and uh, concert um, attendance behavior. But still, younger audiences are also likely to attend regularly music events. To say they are really the, uh, into uh, concert going. They are also highly educated and have a formal music education, as I said earlier, that is to say a musical capital. And they are more open to jazz and electro than more popular music genres. When we r um, look uh, closely at the link between the music, uh, the music genres preferred by this uh, segment of the audiences, uh, they, are, they, they are more open to, to jazz and electro, the meaning to uh, eyebrow genres of uh, popular music, or the more eyebrow genres of popular music than the general uh, more popular, pop, more popular uh, more, uh, genres. So um, <clears throat> I, uh, maybe I can also um, add here that the role of age um, is a, a tricky uh, problem in social sciences as well as in epidemiology and uh, econometrics, because we know that age can um, um, hide different, uh, different effects. The, the, eff the effects of age itself, that is to say the place in the life cycle. Um, when you're young, you tend to have certain music preferences and certain cultural behavior. And when you, when you get older, you turn to different kind of music, maybe more serious, more calm, uh, kinds of music. This is no longer true, but because we have to take into account the what we call the cohort effect, that is to say the birth cohort effect, when you uh, you are born, you were born in fact, it's, it's also to be taken into account because um, there is also a, a period effect, that is to say um, a, a climate change, in fact cultural climate change when there are innovations and um, yesterday in the pre presentation of uh, interfaces, some uh, sound artists said clearly that recording means of production and composition exist only for the last 30 years. And so they tend to be pioneers in this uh, aspect. So they, 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 they cannot be like the previous generation. And we see, when we see the effects of age, we have to take into account that age is also related to the moment of history when we, you are, we were born, in fact. And different kinds of the, uh, different segments of the, of the audiences are not affected the same way by the different innovations. For instance, the birth of jazz uh, uh, had, had a, 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 a huge effect on the baby boomer generation. And the rock music in France also, uh, uh, or, or in the, the US or, 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 or in the other European country. To conclude, because this is a um, uh, hypothesis and basis for the discussions that I wanted to, uh, to, to give you uh, today, 
Uh, I would say that when we look at uh, audience development, um, and I'm relying upon a U uh, European study of 2017, uh, audience development may follow three direc directions. First one is the widening existing audiences. Second one is the deepening the relationship with the core audiences, the regular audiences. And the last one is the diversification of audiences by attracting potential or how to reach audiences, which is the most difficult part of audience de development. Here, I would say that we are maybe um, more into the first direction, that is to say widening towards younger audience segments, which is still a good news for uh, hybrid music uh, as a whole. And uh, younger audience segments, we still have still um, a prior great involvement in, in uh, new music. And these uh, younger segments are also open to jazz and electronic music, which means they have what we call in social sciences or learned eclecticism cultural profile. That is to say, a selective uh, kind of eclecticism and not the regular omnivorousness that some people are uh, uh, a, a thing, and still they are highly educated, so it's it's aligned with this learned eclecticism, with high levels of concert attendances and probably of cultural profiles, a knowledge and familiarity, familiarity with contemporary classical music, and maybe more avant-gardist than classicist, but this is also to be discussed since the term avant-gardist is questionable. And um, those are the preference for innovative eyebrow music genres, which is something we can maybe um, uh, rely on. And, to be t and the last phrase would be that we are in a, uh, uh, maybe in front of what I call a you can't have it all syndrome. That is to say, when audiences are younger, they tend to be more elitist by education, musical knowledge, and cultural profiles than the older ones which is um, a challenge for uh, every culture and institutions, and it's not uh, specific to contemporary classical music, and it's not specific to jazz music. Uh, it's also to be, um, to, to be, to be shared with uh, other forms of artistic expression. Thank you very much.